So, hello and welcome back. Last time we made it so we could add items to our local storage that we would like to buy. In this video, I want to design the cart page and the about page and also change the buy button to add to cart. So, let's start. We add another shop item last time. We can remove this because this was just for demonstration purposes only. And then the button needs to be add to cart. And then we can basically duplicate this whole file and name it um, cart.html and then about html. Yep. So let's do that. Main html and we call this about html and then also the cart html. And then we can also, yeah, maybe let's re, um, rename them later. HTML. And yeah, we can fill out these blanks here now. Let's just call this shop that HTML. And this one is the card HTML. This one is the about HTML. Let's just quit out of whim for a second here. Um. So now move the main dot um, HTML to store. HTML and also move the main JS to store JS. Um sorry. Store HTML. And yeah. Card HTML and then the about HTML. And let's do the same for the about HTML. And here we have everything already. We just need to remove this. And add h one about and write a small paragraph here of hello. I think I need to disable the language server. It's just annoying. Web shop, just like that. And now we can uh, design our card HTML, um, where we would basically just add in um, elements dynamically based on what we have in the card. Course we need to fill in uh, the links again. The 
be about HTML. Then here we need to change this to a shop.js. Shop and here we can remove the JavaScript file because we don't need anything done here at all. Let's take a look at if everything displays correctly still. And it looks like it's not. Let's see. Yep. Um, shop. HTML. JS to shop. JS that stores not available. That is right. So let's give. Let's take a look again. Here is our online shop. Take a look at the card. Nothing's here. About something about this web shop. This looks fine. This one we will build in a second. This seems to be working, right? Be working. So let's go ahead and design our card. Right here, we need to write a new script called the card.js. Also, another thing I want to do is let's take a look at the JS here. I want to use the strict mode. So more um, errors will be found by default. Default, and the same thing will we will do also for the heart JS. So we don't rely on any strange behavior. And let's see. Card. Here, what we want to have is something like this, um, where we want to have a heading and then maybe a div with an ID of card content. And then in here we will add um, anything that is in the card. And here we will um, card shares here. Yeah. 
and and we have given it the ID of our content this and then we want to get our um, the actual card content from the local storage so how do we call that Storage, get item, and we have named that part like that. And then we do the same thing. as we did in the shop JS also, where we check if the card content um, contains anything usable, and if not, um, we will set the card content array to a new array. And of course, um, this is the card content and we will like check the array here and also check the array here like that and then we can loop our over our card content array And here we will mm, create a new element. Um, let's see what we would like to have. Just a div, then inside of that we would like to have um, probably a button to remove the item and what else would we like to have oh wait let's let's do it in a table mm, here the card content let's remove this Oh wait, let's have it, but just have this as a table, table, card content, and this one also, table, And then in the card JS, we would like to create new table data. Document. element and um, that's table data element and we would like to have two table rows
name pro or id pro elements and then also button row then inside of this um, button row we would also like to have a button Button. And then, of course, we would like and child button. Then the button row and the ID row should be added to the table data. Data and child info button row and then last but not least we need to also append this to the card container card content container dot and child the table data like this and now we only need to set the values mm. for that Open dot text equals of item and for the uh, ID row we can say in a text equals to the card container array of i like this and hopefully that already works <laughs> we also need to set a function here to remove the button And listener wants to listen to a click event, and we to register an event listener for the click event. Let's just console log something for now. refine this later so maybe this works maybe not let's add some cats refresh the page and i think i got it mixed up yep i switched i messed it up this needs to be the other way around. This one needs to be the table row. And this one needs to be the table data. Sorry for that. Now this looks much better. We have our card, item something, then we have all that. 
And then we need to, of course, um, implement the um, button, the move button. Maybe we could have it something like this, but in red. But that's a matter of CSS then. Um, I want to have the functionality first. Um, but in the card um, HTML, we also want to have a button at the end to finish the order underneath the table button. Um, I don't know, so, or let's have this as a buy button now. Just buy. I didn't think about um, the payment processor that we would like to use and things like that. I'm also unsure if I want to implement a back end in the series because I mainly want to focus on front end technology. But let's see if there's an interest in that and uh, I will decide from there where we want to go with this. Let's take a look at our card JS again. Now to remove our item, let's see. I want to undo this again. I want to just see for a second what we get when we press the uh, when we log our E. Um what properties we have there. So because maybe um we don't need to do it um like how I have it in mind right now. But let's see. And we do have Of course, our target again. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking right now how this would be done most efficiently. What I'm thinking right now is to just use the ID here to basically remove the element. So something like if we want to lock the target here, target. Let's see if I get the button, if that works. And we do get the button. And on that we can call the remove function. So we remove it from the DOM. And then also we can remove um, it from the card items when we say card content array um, dot splice and then we can do one um, from the index of, uh, of the current index. So that should give us, um, yeah, that should remove one item. So after that, we just need to store our stuff in the local storage again, because we've modified it. Set item, then card, and then we don't, we need to not forget to stringify, stringify our card content array. That. Um, just 
yeah why not so I just leave it in there if it doesn't work then um need to fix it again because I'm unsure if that everything works yet oh here missed this now let's see how that looks and I mean, we get we lock this, but it is not removed from the DOM. I'm unsure why that is. Of course, this is a function we need to call it. So let's try this again. Item another, and it's. Ah, yeah, sure. <laughs> we don't only want to remove the button, but we also want to get the parent node and then remove, call remove on that. Um, node, like this. Maybe that works. doesn't look like it. I need to refresh it uh, every time now. Okay, okay. Save this removed. Okay. This element, button row. Oh, of course, the button row and then we Okay, now I just need to do some of just think first before I type. Um, that would be helpful. And now it works as expected. Now we just need to basically make a post request with the buy button, and then we basically have a working shop so let's take a look at the buy button and let's maybe give it an id so we can style it and we can also implement the functionality Yeah, this is the shop, I'm sorry. That is the wrong one. Yeah. Buy button. Get ID. Like that, then we can have dot yeah. event listener also the click event and here we basically just want to send mm some website basically let's just do http s localhost at some port and then i don't know could be this endpoint i'm really not sure and then we need to specify our headers and content. Methods. Post. Then our headers. And we need to specify the 
application content type header I mean content type header and we just set what the application JSON so it knows we are sending JSON information and that would be already it then for the con of for the body I think there we need to JSON string file our and thus this is the list of IDs that we want to buy. Oops. Like this. Now let's see again. Okay, looks better. And now if we go on to the network tab, then we should also see if we, yeah, if you buy it. Then yeah, it fails, but um, we see that we've made a request to localhost shop. Yep, this looks fine. So now we just need to style it a little bit um, to make it look a little bit better. And for that, we had our main CSS. Mm -hmm. And let's add on to here. Let's have a height of RAM, I mean, color of white, then background, background of. orange yeah let's do this for every button by default <clears throat> so also just the width auto like that maybe and same selector color mm -hmm. tag Borders like solid. Card. That. Mm, yep. I guess that was the button. And for the buy button, I want to have it one second, one wait, boulder, and for the 
Spite Puppy. Spite Puppy. I want to have that. Um, at least. At least thirty ram and whip, and also the high speed. More than two, three of them. Like that. Let's take a look at how that looks like. That looks much better. Let's have the border style to start it. Back. Let's see how that looks. Oh, of course, it, I wanted to adjust the width also. Like that. Now let's take a look how that looks like. And that looks like I wanted it to look like. And yeah, with that, we have a basic webshop front end if we remove items here then items get removed um but other than that looks fine we add some cats here then we have some cats here and if we remove items and we only have one item, no items. Yeah, this looks like it's working. And if we click this, then we also get a network request right here to shop. That of course fails because we don't have any backend. And yeah, and it's also relatively responsive. Well, it's not perfect, of course, but I mean, it works on, yeah, any screen size, basically, more or less, and gets displayed probably like that. Whoops. So yeah, this should serve as a very basic front end. Of course, I'm not a designer, so there could, of course, design, of course, could be better. But functionality-wise, um, this would serve as a really basic webshop front end.
we could of course um, also use the fetch API to load our items here dynamically, but um, this would be then more or less part of the backend. So I will pause the playlist right here and see if there's interest in the backend stuff also. If not, I might even cover this in the base programming uh, playlist and make a, a backend in C++. Um, yeah, let's see. But I think this is it for now and I will um, continue from here based on the interest. Yeah, thanks again for watching and let me know what you would like to see next. Yeah, see you.